Not, so you're playing the Maui Classic again, apparently. Yeah. Uh, Gonzaga's not the same team you saw right. early as we see either of you guys, but right. what what have you seen from them so far? Yeah. You haven't really gotten I into it. I did not watch the game other day. Um, I try not to watch um, the game because you get caught up into it and you don't watch the people you're playing. Right? It gets going, it gets close, and there's no way you're going to you know, turn away from it. But, um, I followed the score. I, I, I looked their, their stuff up. I, I follow them throughout the year. Um, their rotation shorter, and they're playing bigger. And so they're, they're playing Anton Watson at the three, or Greg at the three. I don't know how they are actually doing that um, schematically, but they're, they're playing a bigger lineup. And then their guards have always been really good. You know, Hickman and Nimhard. So they're they're a well coached. You know, one of the best coaches in the country. We've, we've faced them back to back years, but we faced them back to back years early in the season. I think this will be, you know, a different challenge for us. Coach, that 17 0 run in the first half, what was the difference in that time frame that got you guys going? Yeah, getting stops, you know, just, just being able to, to make it difficult. They did a couple things that we hadn't seen with a couple big on big ball screens um, that bottled us up. Martinez played really well, you know, to start the game. And then we just um, started to establish Zach, you know, there in the post. And then we're able to get stops and push the basketball. Trey Kaufman had a good start to the game. He got on the glass. So if you can establish Zach I and mean, then you can rebound the basketball and then get in transition, you know, it's going to be a pretty pretty good recipe for success. See, Matt Camden's dunk kind of got that run going there yeah. that he threw down. What have you seen from him just in terms of earning yeah. those minutes then in that moment? Yeah, he's been great, man. He's really bought into defending. And, and that's really the main thing when you come off the bench, like to really help our team. Can you come off the bench, take care of the basketball, defend, and then everything else, like whether you can get offensive rebounds or you can get out in transition or knock down some shots. So uh, the spacing is so important for us. So like him and Miles really give us a lot of spacing, you know, and, and what they're able to do. I thought Miles did some really good things for us. You guys don't seem satisfied at all, this right. team. These guys are all very business-like. Has right. that been a point of focus for you? Yeah, no question. I, I just think, you know, the focus is light in, in what we've had to sit in, you know, both coaching and playing. Like, you know, it's hard. You know, like you, you have goals to win and, yeah. and what we went through last year. Um, but, you know, don't feel sorry for yourself and get better and keep improving. You know, because everybody that we play, the game ended the way it did because we respected our opponent and we played hard. Like we were ready for it. We knew they could beat us. And, and our guys, you know, went out and put it together. But um, it's a challenge. Like, it, it doesn't get easier, right? And, you know, it gets harder. Matt, the first four minutes of the second half, you, you blitzed him and put it out of reach. How right. important was it coming out of the locker room to keep that momentum? Yeah, that first five minutes is always important. You, you kind of look at that Kansas-Gonzaga game, you know, kind of the same way, right? You know, they it was you know tied at half, but Kansas is up one, and they just, they just push that game out. We're up 16. We're very fortunate to score that last basket because we really didn't execute. And, uh, you know, so you have it at 16, you know. I said, you know, this would be a shame if you go to that first media timeout and it's around 10. But instead, you know, you know, we get it in the 20s real quick. And, um, you know, kudos to our guys because they, they, they made the nice reads and they went at them. They stayed aggressive. Coach Trey was talking about how you told him to be more aggressive after the first round game. How did you see that come to life today? Yeah, we're really after the first half. I didn't think he was very good in that first half of our first game. Like, And it wasn't from his effort. It was just like he, he seemed like he was getting his hands on a lot of basketballs, but he wasn't grabbing them with two hands. And then the second half, he played great. You know, he just has to believe in himself and go get basketballs and post up strong and just kind of take what the defense gives him. And I kind of talked about Lance Jones about that. Like, sometimes, you know, Trey got 13 shots today. It might be the most he's had all year. Um, and sometimes you're gonna, that's going to happen. Um, but sometimes you're going to get two or three. You know, and the same thing with Lance. Like, you know, you're not always going to get a lot of shots. You know, we're not going to have predetermined thoughts. We, we play through Braden's ball screens. We play through Zach's post-ups. we got a lot of different stuff that we run. We get the ball to Fletcher sometimes working downhill. Um, we will try to bring him off some pins at times. Um, but there's, there's times he doesn't get a lot of shots. So it's just, you know, really trying to get into that bonus, trying to establish Zach as much as we can, and, and just kind of do it differently. How, yeah. how does, sorry, how did Trey positively impact the win today? Well, just his rebounding and scoring. Like, he was just active. You know, it's if you want to give him a lot of attention and stuff and leave Zach one-on-one, -on -one, you know, like that's you're picking the poison. So, like, when those guys are kind of half-helping, and the thing that happens 
you know, in that second game, is like those guys aren't going to the TCU game thinking about Zach Lee. You know, but now they get that good win against TCU, and now it turns to it, and you got to think quickly about how you're going to deal with him. He's different than everybody else in the country. If you want to stay one on one, you know, that's fine. If you want to double him, that's fine with us also. But when you got a guy like Trey that's weak side and you're doubling and he does shoot it, you're going to get a lot, you know, a lot of opportunities. But Trey got a little bit different, you know, the whole game. He got in transition a couple times. It was good to see. What's the most impressive thing about what Lance has been able to do in these first two tournament games and how he's really positively impacted this? Yeah, I thought he's been good defensively, especially today. I thought he really, I thought Brown's a hell of a player and he really makes those guys go, you know, even though their big kid was MVP of their league, like, um, you know, he really does a good job in their ball screen action. I thought Lance did a good job of picking him up full court, not letting him get those kick ahead passes and, and just staying with him the whole game. You kind of saw there at the end how, how Brown, how dangerous he is. He made a couple of really nice plays. Um, common, commonalities between your, your program and Gonzaga? Um, I would say size. You know, a lot of times when, when you have big kids that are out there, you know, North Carolina, Gonzaga, Purdue, Wisconsin, you know, Michigan State, like you get, I'm probably missing a couple there that have had traditional bigs through the years. Like, and I think that's where, um, you know, we have that. I think the ability to play in the half court and the ability to play in transition also. I don't think they get the credit for playing in the half court. I don't think we get the credit for playing in transition. Matt, when you committed to playing trains that against one another this offseason, it felt like he was trying to get more offense on the floor. Yeah, yes. this particular time of year. Is that no question. Pay off for it? No question. Yeah, obviously it did today. Um, and I thought Trey in the second half, like I said in the first uh, first game, was really there. And, you know, if, if you have a good team and you can't score 60 points in the NCAA, like, I, it's frustrating. And if you had a bad offense and you had a great defense, you'd understand. But that's how we won. We grinded it out. But that wasn't our case, you know, last year. We had a pretty good offense. Uh, not as good as this year's. But I just said, hey, man, we got to get better offensively. we got to put more skill out there. we got to get different looks out there. So our ability to play Trey and then the play <coughs> and Gillis in the way how different they are is really good because Trey's a bruiser and he can go down there. But he's also skilled where he can make plays. Well, Mason can drag people out and make threes. And so that balance with Zach, I think, really, really helps. But that's all we've really tried to kind of go to. It doesn't mean we don't emphasize defense, right? But just putting that skill out there and, and trying to keep developing that because you got to be able to score. Like when we went to the, uh, the Elite Eight and, and had to play Virginia, obviously Carson Edwards, you know, went crazy and made shots. But the game before that, you know, we scored 99 points. You know, we score over 100 today. Like, you've got to score the basketball. And there's some games the ball's not going to go in. And if it can't go in, then you've got to be able to grind it and guard and uh, get rebounds and take care of the ball so you can. But you obviously want that balance and you want to put as many weapons out as you can. Matt, you joked about uh, Johnny Hill not co trying to keep him out of coaching. Right. How much work goes into the guys around you? And then what's yeah. it feel like to have assistant coaches as head coaches, former player at coaches all in this yeah, bracket? Yeah, it's rewarding. I, I say that kind of tongue-in-cheek, you know, but I, I do try to stop players from going into coaching but um i always say just have a hell of a life and get a job and get colts tickets and you know enjoy yourself like you know why put yourself people don't understand like if you're 25 and 5 like you're miserable those five times like you're, you're absolutely miserable it sits on you like the people around you that you love like you're, you're not fun to be around like there's no one enjoys it your kids like look at you like well, what the hell is this problem like, eh. Michigan State beat us by two. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, why would you be mad? Like, you know what I mean? Like, but you are. That's the way it is. Like, you just, you live with it, and you just have kind of a one-track mind. But, no, it's um, it's rewarding if they understand. Like, you know, they're there for them, right? You're there for your players. You're there for the program. Um, you're a lot smaller than you think you are, and you're a lot bigger than you think you are. So just keep things in perspective and, and understand, you know, what the mission is. What improvements have you seen from Miles Coleman defensively? Uh, he's, he's made a lot of uh, improvements. He's gotten a lot better. He needs more of an opportunity. You know, it's tough when you've got a lot of guys, you know, with it. But he's, he's kept a positive attitude. He's continued to work. And um, you see when he gets out there, you know, he, he can make things happen. Have there, been like, have there been specific areas or things that have stood out to you here over the past uh, few games? Really on the ball, you know, just, just just containing the dribble, taking guys out of rhythm, and then understanding what's going on with different actions. It's those quick turnarounds, like, you, you really know, like, what they're doing. Like, he's much better in those areas. But he really hasn't been bad throughout the year. He just hasn't gotten the opportunities because we have a deep team. What's been the evolution of the rotation, just with how deep you started? And right. How that was such a talking point? Yeah, just, you know, I've, I've went with Cam and, and, and Miles here, you know, just, just trying to get 
as many guys that you know give that athleticism, but also give that skill level, you know, to where they're going to stretch it. And when guys overdo things with Zach or things they overdo things with Braden, now we got spacing if they want to, you know, do those things. And now you've got some guys that can step up and make those shots. Coach, most points in the program history in March Madness tied for the most to a mar large margin of victory. How do you use that as momentum going through the tournament? Um, it's really just a different game the next game. You know, I mean, it's good. You know, you feel good about yourself, but the next game will be a different game. Like, you, you got to find that momentum and that rhythm, you know, within that game. And it took us a little bit of time today. You know, you see that. But it also can go the other way. You can play well to start a game, and then you can get into one of those ruts. So you just got to stay with it and stay process-based. <coughs> the confidence you take away going on a run with Braden on the bench. That's something that yeah. I think a month ago probably doesn't happen. Right. Um, these guys had to realize that there's going to be a point where Zach's on the bench, Braden's on the bench, and somebody's going to have to figure it out. How big was that? That was huge for us. You know, just the confidence our guys had. Once again, like um, Lance Jones did a really good job you know, taking care of him. He, he had a pull up three off a ball screen. Well, number one there at the end. There at the end, we don't execute, even though he banks it in. He didn't like, so he gets in some different spots there. And obviously, like, think about it. Like, you guys cover us. Like, how many times have we seen a one-three-one? And we worked on it. We worked not just now. We worked on it before. So you got to kind of look at those other two opponents, even though we're focused on Grambling. And we don't know who we play there either. You kind of dive into some of those teams and say, okay, what's something they do differently than everybody else? So you look at TCU, you look at them, and if something pops up, you know, give it five minutes, you know, in practice. So we've been doing the one-three-one here for a handful of practices here. So we, we were prepared to go against it if we ended up playing them. And it doesn't hurt you, right? But for us, we find out who we play on, who we might play on Sunday. So we don't have an opponent on Sunday like everybody else because you're in that play-in. So then you got a couple practices until you get to that Wednesday game. You don't know, but so you just kind of worry about your own team. But if you can grab a couple things, you know we worked on a lot of press stuff. We worked on a lot of gets a lot of zone stuff. So Matt Trey said he's at the press conference. He's trying to carve out a role, you know, going into the season. Yeah. Um, where have you seen him? I guess been able to do that. His biggest maybe yeah. improvement. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's frustrating because sometimes like those guys like. Um, if Mason Gillis plays really, really well, like Trey won't play as much and he did nothing wrong. But you still feel as a competitor, like, you know, what did I do wrong? So that's a, it's always important to go back to guys. Like, he had a game early in the year where it was like, he was like minus 12 in like, like 11 minutes, it was plus minus. And it was all circumstantial. He went back and I said, hey man, you're not making mistakes. You're not, you just like, why didn't you play anymore? Well, we just played better when you weren't in the game, but you really had nothing to do with it. Well, as a player, sometimes that's hard to process. But as a coach, sometimes it's like, well, who cares about the reason? This is just better for us at this time. So, you know, he's very analytic. He's a very intelligent person. So always going back to him and, and, and making sure, okay, you got to improve here, you got to improve here. But you're doing some good things. And sometimes he was doing some good things, but just wasn't kind of finishing some plays. And so, like, when you play more minutes, you get to work through those things. When you don't, like now... You know, it's just you get pulled a little quicker or whatever. But you're also, you know, I always tell guys, you know, don't get upset or ask me why you came out because somebody went in for you. Like, I'm not taking you out as much as I'm putting you in. And that's hard to that's hard to think that way. You're the guy getting in, right? So, but he's great. You know, he, he's really good. We talked to him at the end of the year. It's something I, you know, you really dissect. People don't realize whether you get beat in the Sweet 16 or the first round or you don't make the tournament or whatever, you always go back and dissect and look at yourself. Like, I can't fix them if I don't fix me. So I always go back every season at the end of the season and, like, you know, we hired a new analytical group and right away I just said, like, you know, like, give it to us. Like, I know you want our business and you want us to write you a check, but give it to us. Like, tell us the truth. Like, break us down. Where where should we be better? Where, where can we make improvements? A lot of times when you're good at some things, people think you're just okay. And, like, why not be great in those areas? Like, sometimes you have some real physical limitations in other places, and you just got to be honest about, it. okay, we, can we make these improvements or whatever? I kind of recruit the player over, you know, I kind of recruit the person over the player sometimes. So sometimes we might not have as much athleticism, and we might be shortchanged a little bit here, but hopefully you can make it up there, you know, your competitive spirit and your character and just your makeup. And just when you have those things, man, it's enjoyable to be around, and I think it just enhances everything. Awesome. All right, thank you.